Hello and welcome to another Photoshop video. This time we will be creating some lovely sunset colors. All in all, this will be a little more complex, so without much more talking, let's go. By the way, you can find the raw file in the description of the video if you want to follow along this tutorial, but let's get started. First off, in the preview you have seen this look more like a panoramic image. That's because I have cropped this shot a bit, since we don't need that much of that boring sky up there. So you can see I just removed a big part of it, just like that. And now we can start with the basic stuff. First off, I do want to change the profile to Adobe Standard. This doesn't change much, it just reduces the contrast a bit, and so we do have more control over it ourselves. Then let's go through the basic panel. First off, I do want to adjust the white balance. What I do have in mind for this shot is the overall color tones should look a little colder, so I'm going to drop the temperature first. Alright, that looks good. And I do also want to drop the tint, so we don't have too much of those magenta tones. Just like that. Now you can see we do have some more subtle sunset color tones going more into the pastel range, but I think for this shot this will look pretty cool. Next up, I want to work on the contrast. Looking at the histogram, we can see most of that luminance is towards the brighter side of the image. So I'm going to drop the shadows all the way down and thus I'm trying to spread the histogram, adding some more contrast and just adding some more dark tones to it. We can further work on this by bringing down the blacks. Just a bit. All right. You can see we do have more contrast now. I guess I can also increase the whites. So we are pushing the histogram a little more to the right side as well. Just like that. And when I'm holding down the Alt key, you can see there is some overexposure coming in from the right side. I personally think that's not a big deal since we don't have any detail in here anyway. And I will be adding some glow to this area later. So that's okay for me. Then next up, I do want to make this image look a bit sharper by bringing up the texture. I'm adding quite a lot here. Usually I won't go this high, but here it works quite good. At the same time, I do want to slightly bring down the clarity, which just adds some kind of subtle glow to this shot. I'm not going to touch the vibrance or the dehaze or anything. Instead, let's jump into the local adjustments. So I am starting by making the sky a little darker. You can see this linear gradient is a little bit skewed. That's because I want the left side to be darker than the right side, because of course from the right side there's the sun coming in. So we want to keep it looking realistic. Here let's just bring down the exposure. That's already enough, just a little bit. And then I do want to apply a very subtle glow effect on the right side. Therefore I have added this radial gradient. And as usual I'm starting by simply increasing the blacks. I might as well bring down the highlights just in case the overexposure gets too much. Then let me see, I do think I want to have some warmer tones in here, so let's bring up the temperature. Alright, and finally I do want to make this glow effect stronger by bringing down the dehaze. Alright, perfect. That's it for the glow. Then there is this linear gradient for the foreground left. Here I do want to make the bright parts even brighter without affecting the shadows. So I'm going to increase the highlights first. And I can even boost the whites a little bit. Just like that. And at the same time in the foreground I do want to have some less sharpness so I'm going to drop the texture. Okay. But I do want to have some more details in the fog so I'm going to boost the clarity. And you can see this works really, really good to bring out those fog waves just like that. And that's it for the local adjustments. Why the difference to before? But now let's continue with the color grading. In the color mixer, I want to start with the saturation. I do want to bring up the orange tones. And I also want to bring up the yellow tones. 
and then let's drop the blue tones a little bit since they are quite strong here all right perfect and we can apply some split toning let's actually start with the mid tones and instead of a warm color tone i want to have a cold color tone applied here let's see that's a good spot for the hue but the saturation is a bit too much i want it to be very very low just barely visible like that all right we can even make the midtones a little darker by dropping this luminance slider right here which i think works pretty good for this shot and thus we're just adding some more contrast perfect now let's switch over to the highlights and here i do want to have a very warm color tone somewhere in the yellow range and again let's bring down the saturation to not overdo it perfect all right that's it for the split toning finally let's head into the detail step and quickly sharpen this image perfect and now we can finish the editing in photoshop first off of course we need to clean up this image therefore i'm going to use the spot healing brush and let's get rid of this tree branch first. Seems a little strange here, so I'm going to use the clone stem tool and just get rid of those leftovers. And then of course, there are those sensor spots. I guess you don't want to see it, so I'm skipping this part in the video. But I'm just brushing over all those dots with the spot healing brush. All right, then next up, I really don't like the look of those clouds. I want to add a little bit of motion blur to them, so I'm going to select and let's say select sky. It's looking like a good selection, so I'm going to hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And here we have a sky layer. Then I'm holding down the Ctrl key and click on the thumbnail of the sky layer to select it again. And let's go to filter, blur, motion blur and just add a little bit of motion blur. So we are getting some less chaotic clouds up there. That's enough. Okay. Now let's zoom in and see if there are any parts affected of the motion blur, which shouldn't be affected. Actually, let's just apply a layer mask here on the sky selection. And with the black brush, I am going to just paint over the edge of the mountain. Perfect. Then let's add a bit more contrast here. I'm going to do this very roughly first by applying a levels adjustment layer. And again, with this levels adjustment layer, you can see a histogram and you can also see we don't have any black tones in here anymore. To add contrast, I'm simply going to use the black point and drag it to the right. Just like that. And we're getting some nice contrast going on for this image. Then let's work on the glow for a moment. Here I'm adding a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light, grab the brush tool, then I'm holding down the alt key to pick up a color from the bright part on the right side. Let's adjust this color a little more, making it a bit brighter, like that. And now let's bring down the brush opacity. And I'm going to paint in some glow like this just over the mountain tops so it looks like the light is spilling over them perfect some very subtle glow now let's bring more contrast to this image again i'm using a new layer for this and change the blending mode to overlay and i'm going to use the tk panel plugin for some luminosity masks since i want to target specific areas so let's check this real quick So I'm starting with the lights to luminosity mask. You can see the white parts are the parts which I want to change. So let's hit layer mask and apply the lights to mask on our overlay layer. Then with the white brush, I am going to paint in some more contrast. Let's change the brush opacity first, however. And first off, I want to make the foreground parts a little brighter. So you can see we, we are only affecting the brighter parts without changing the shadows. So that's really, really helpful here. 
perfect. Let's also try to change the mountains. Actually, we will affect the sky if we just brush over it like this. So I'm going to, again, hold down the control key, click on our sky layer down there. So we have a sky selection. On our dodging layer, on the layer mask, I'm going to hit Shift F5 and select black. So if you now brush over the mountains like this, the sky won't change and we can make the mountains a little brighter. Perfect. Now I want to do this once more, so let's add a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay, use the TK panel plugin, but this time I'm going with the lights one, just to have a brighter range, just like that. And again, I'm going to select the sky and fill this area with black on the layer mask, so we just don't change the sky. And again, using a white brush, I am going to paint in some more brightness here. Especially on the mountains. And maybe a little bit in the foreground. Perfect. Now there is some halo around this mountain. I do want to fix it with a black brush. I am going to make it a very hard brush so I get the edge right. Just like this. Perfect. Now that's looking a lot better already. Now, as I said, this is more of a complex edit than I usually do. That also means I'm trying to work non-destructively. You can see I still have all those layers. And from this point on, I do want to have everything merged in one layer without erasing all those previous layers. Again, I'm just using the TK panel and here I can say merge visible. So all those adjustments are now in this new layer up there. So with this new layer, I do want to make the mountains look a little bit bigger. And here I'm going to edit and use perspective warp. So I'm going to create a box just around those mountains because that's the area with which I want to scale up a bit. Then I'm creating another box for the sky part and I'm making sure to connect those two boxes and let's do the same for the foreground. Create the box up here and here. Once we set up those boxes, I'm going to hit warp and I'm holding down the shift key to click on this line and then just drag it up a bit. And you can see we are nicely scaling up those mountains without affecting the rest of the image too much. Once that is done, actually let me pull this line down as well. Just like that, okay. And once I'm done here, I'm just hitting okay. Awesome. Now I do want to change the colors a little more, so let's apply a gradient map adjustment layer. Switch the blending mode to soft light and make sure to drop the opacity to around 20%, just like that. With this gradient up here, we can affect those colors some more. The point on the left will affect the shadows while the point on the right will change the highlights. So for the shadows I'm going to, I think I'm going to just add a gray color tone so the shadows won't change too much. But for the highlights I do want to have some warmer color tones. So let's see. That looks pretty good. Let's go with something like this. All right. You can see we do have some warmer highlights. I could mask out parts of the foreground with the fog, but for now I think that looks pretty good. So let's merge a visible layer once more, just like this. And at this point, let's take a look at the Nick Collection plugin. First off, I am going to check the polarization effect, which will just make the colors look a lot cooler. I think a little bit is already enough here. And I think I want to check another filter the skylight filter in particular to make it look a little warmer, but that's too much. I'm not sure if this is working. Instead, let's check the brilliance warmth filter and just add a little bit of warmth here. Just like that. Okay, let's apply it like this. This looks really, really good. I do think I will stop at this point to not overdo the post-processing. So I hope this video was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, 
feel free to ask me in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.